Hello, welcome to Live at Five. Uh, today's topic is that. Uh, I made it complicated. So it's not, we're not just talking about how to ride a bike today. We're talking about learning how to teach someone how to ride their bike. One level removed, it's kind of meta. So, because it's so complicated, I need extra help, and for that, I've gone to Sylvie. Hey! <laughs> have you, how many people, not how many, have you taught someone how to bike who didn't know when you began? Yes. Awesome. What age was this individual? <laughs> I think, I don't know, uh, I've done it a few times. And I've been around people who are in the process of learning for the first time and are able to get up, but like need more confidence. I've been around adults like that a lot. Um, but the people that I've physically gotten from, I am scared to sit on a bicycle to I am now riding a bicycle uh, is less than a dozen. And they've all been under the age of 12 also, I think. Cool. But we're not just talking about kids today, I think, right? I mean, we want to talk about how to get anybody up on a bicycle. Yeah, so I think I'm on the flip side of that. I've taught quite a few adults how to bike. And I think with kids, they have a lot of kids have like, well, not all kids, not all anyone. Sometimes kids have a lot of confidence going into it because they don't know the consequences of falling. And the excitement of getting on a bike is so huge. I found teaching adults that it takes a little while to get people the confidence to begin, but then they tend to pick things up pretty quickly. So I like that we can bring both sides of this to the lesson. Yeah, I think it's a part of it is, uh, I mean, you can't take out your own ego from the situation. And so being an older person, there's things that go along with that into learning how to ride. And so I know one thing that we wanted to talk about first was where to do this if we're going to do this. And I think that the age of the person and the experience lo of level of the person has a lot to do with that. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Well, let me just tell you, Kevin, I thought the video I made was done and now it's downloading. So that was something else that needed to do. So no let's definitely get into some of the like behind the scenes stuff. So choosing the bike to use, the place to go biking, some of the accessories you might need, and then we'll show a little video of Kevin pretending like he's new at biking. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so suggested places to begin. What you got? So uh, I think the instinct is, because that's what I see in all the movies about kids growing up in the suburbs, uh, is that you have uh, the parent with their kid standing behind uh or standing behind the kid uh and they've got the hand on the back of the seat and then they're going down the sidewalk uh and that's sort of i think what we're familiar with when we think about teaching someone how to ride a bike my experience tells me this is not necessarily the place that you want to be when you're first learning how to ride a bicycle. The place where you want to be when you're first learning how to ride a bicycle isn't going to require you to be in a, you know, five foot ribbon of space. I want to be somewhere where there's a whole bunch of extra space. Somewhere where uh, if I go gliding off 10 feet to the left or 10 feet to the right, it's okay. My suggestions for this, empty parking lots if you can find them, completely empty is best. Uh, if you've, uh, during the summer, uh, I know school parking lots are great for this. Um, and also, if they're open, uh, blacktops, uh, basketball courts are great. Um, 
The only thing with the basketball court, and we'll talk a little bit about this as we get towards the end, this is a preview of uh, step number nine. Uh, you're going to go where you look. So with the basketball courts, if you're looking at that big pole, you're going to go towards the big pole. Um, I've had a lot of success with uh, large parking lots, and if you can find it, this is being specific, a slight slope is great. Just a little bit of a downhill. If it's a little bit uphill or if it's a flat, you're not going to be able to get that momentum as easily as you would if it had just a tiny bit of a downhill. Now, you don't want a lot. You don't want too much because then, you know, you're going down a hill out of control. Um, but staying off of the sidewalk and finding a big blacktop, I think, is a great place to start. Nice. I think the next thing is like choosing what kind of bike to use. So with kids, a lot of times kids bikes come with training wheels. Take them off. Just take them off because they don't teach you how to balance and having training wheels on teaches you to use the bike in a way that's nothing like actually biking. I think the only benefit is getting used to using the brakes uh, and, you know, getting used to the pedaling motion. But a lot of that you can pick up just as easily once you've gotten balance down. Anything you want to add to that, Kevin? I've seen yeah. a, a lot of cool kids bikes like that have been designed a lot like the original like Velocipede, so no pedals, just a bike that you walk on. Yeah, what else? Yeah, I don't know if Strider is a brand name or not, but it does describe the motion that you're doing with these bicycles. They're very uh, small, and in addition to not having any pedals and not having any uh, uh, training wheels, they're also very low to the ground. The seat is lower to the ground than it would be on a regular bicycle. On a regular bicycle, you're high enough up that your feet are just barely dancing across the floor. Your toes can just barely touch. But when learning to ride, drop that seat down as low as it'll go. And in that way, you're going to have your feet on the ground and feel a lot more comfortable. So with adults, what I've had a lot of luck with is a folding bike. And I know not all people have folding bikes. But something that's a little bit too small is awesome. Something that an individual is going to feel confident, like stepping off of, and not they just they don't have any chance of like slamming their body down on the top tube. They want to be able to get the seat nice and low so they can put both feet down totally flat. And the cool thing about a folding bike is that the pedals fold up and lots of little things adjust in a significant way to make that bike feel, you know, like something that you can get confident with. Customizability, very important. Okay, Kevin, my video is done. I think I think I can play this now. And this is an awesome little intro to all the skills you need and so all then, the kind of steps. So you know it's the share and then the video file option at the bottom there. Yep, let's do it. Cool, go for it. Okay, a little bit of peaceful silence while I find the place I've saved the video I just made. <laughs> and got it. Okay. Ah, look at that. Cool. So, it's just going to begin. Okay, so step one. Take off the pedals, fold them up. Not all pedals come off the same way. And I had a mom last week who was saying she wanted to do this and she didn't have the tool at home to take the pedals off. But almost any bike shop will be happy to help you do that. So next thing is getting confident on the bike. Kevin, what are you doing in this scene? So I'm not riding the bike, most notably. I'm standing next to the bike, and I'm paying attention to how it moves. Uh, I'm looking at the different parts of the bike and making sure I understand what they are and what they do, and then checking over the bike itself. If I am confident when I'm riding the bike that it's going to work, that makes me more comfortable when I actually do ride it. So making sure the tires are full and inflated and knowing what that means. Making sure the brakes are able to stop me and knowing how they work before I actually need to use them is absolutely something that's important. Paying attention to the chain. How does the chain move when it goes around? And what does it mean when I move the pedals? It means the chain moves and that moves the wheel. What does that motion look like? Getting familiar with that before I ride. There's a whole bunch of different things I'm doing before I'm ever up on the bicycle at all. Making sure I know how these things work. Uh, and the more familiar I get with them before I start to ride, uh, the more comfortable I'll be when I am riding. Uh, here I'm paying attention to the quick releases that are on both the front wheel and on the seat and then dropping that seat down real nice and low, as low as it'll go. Um, and just getting comfortable with the bike as it moves, uh, even without me on it. Uh, how does the handlebars turning make the bike move? How does leaning the bike make the bike move? 
And then when you're ready to get on, yeah, drop that saddle down. I had someone I was teaching to bike and she got a flat like the second time we went out. So we did a flat fixing lesson and it was great. Like she did all of it alone, you know, with a little bit of guidance. And by the end of it, she was like, oh, I know a lot of things about my bike. I didn't know any of this. And now I've got these skills that most cyclists don't have. So that was a huge confidence boost. I think, yeah, I mean, since you're talking about it and we talked about tires a little bit, even having the tires be a little bit softer than they would be when you were going normally is not a bad idea. Keep your speed down, keep you a little more stable. So right here, I'm not using the pedals at all. I'm literally just using my feet to get around. Um, and so once I've practiced balancing and essentially just walking, but with fewer steps, <laughs> then I can move in to the braking uh, and stopping the bicycle. You'll notice here I'm using both brakes, front and rear, uh, just a little bit of each one. Uh, and knowing how to use those uh, both uh, ends up being important later on. So start with that first. This is a common lesson in mountain biking. If you look at the thing, you will hit the thing. So always look past the obstacle, around the obstacle, and you'll go that way. Which is easier said than done, I think, especially when you're new. You want to be aware of the dangers, and so you're looking at those things. But the more you stare at something, the more likely you are to go towards it. Cool, so at this point, we've got one pedal flipped back open, and Kevin's just gonna kind of launch off. Uh, I like to call this actually, this is two pedals open, but I like to begin with one pedal, get used to that motion of just kind of launching on the bike, get up to what's called like a pedal ready position so that when you put some weight on the pedal, you get a little momentum. Something else is thinking about like foot placement on that pedal. So he's gonna keep the ball of his foot like close to his toes on the pedal, not his heel. And that's what's gonna move him forward, not accidentally back. Yeah, it's a I tiny mean, difference. <laughs> it's a tiny difference to pedal with, you, if, even if you don't know, if you've been pedaling with your heel for a long time, it, you can tell when you're pedaling with your toes instead. Um, this is the advanced move, which is uh, practicing standing up uh, when you're on the bicycle. And if you can get to this point, it's not just a skill that makes you look cool when you inevitably go to the X Games and uh, start doing backflips and things. It's actually a skill that helps you to balance the bicycle. Feel how the bicycle moves when it's underneath your body, when you're not using your seat to make it balance, when you're just using your body and your feet, or your hands and your feet. Um, it makes a big difference. Um, and it can help you turn quicker. It can help you see around corners and uh, behind you a little bit easier. So. Uh, there's uh, always something more you can be practicing. Sweet. So that was like five minutes of all the things you need to know to get going, but it doesn't happen in five minutes. It took me and the woman I was teaching maybe six sessions until she was able to like go out and ride on the road with me confidently. Sure. And so that's a huge piece of this is like, you know, you saw Kevin doing some advanced skills standing up. That's just one of the many advanced skills that I'd want someone to get down before we actually get off the blacktop and go someplace else. So step 10, final step is get to know all the rules of the road, build on those skills, find videos about bike skills, but don't get out and do it until you've got all this stuff kind of nailed down. That's one of the things that I've found helpful when learning a skill like bike riding and anything especially that involves my body is watching someone else do it and really slowing it down and paying attention to the way their body moves um, and paying attention to the good habits that they have and trying to emulate those. One of those habits being helmet wearing. Um, if you're in the habit of doing it from the very beginning, then it's not a skill you have to learn later on. And to a certain extent, it is a skill to remember to grab the helmet every single time you leave the house. Because if you're, it's not something that you're practicing, then it's harder to do that thing. So if you start from the beginning with those good habits, you're going to uh, have a better time keeping up with them as well. Cool. I think we did it. Now people know how to bike. <laughs> cool. That was it. Yeah. So my suggestions are uh, don't plan on doing it all at once. Um, it's going to take a whole bunch of different times. And if you 
on day one are able to take your feet off of the ground and glide for three seconds, great. Now you've set a baseline and now you have a goal that you can try and reach the next time you go, which is literally just longer than you did the day before. And you keep working up and see how many of those tiles you can go past on the blacktop. Um, see how many seconds you can stay up. Um, and then you're just slowly improving every single time. And if it takes you two sessions, great. If it takes you 10 sessions, great. The goal is to get up. It's not to get up very quickly. So as long as you're up at some point, uh, then you're moving in the right direction. Kevin, I noticed teaching adults, they tend to have a long attention span. But with that said, this is something that's so new to people that it does get a little exhausting. So we would usually do like an hour and a half session. And we always began with like checking the bike. We always ended with like walking the bike away and, you know, just like getting off and kind of chatting about how things went. But what do you suggest with kids? Like how long should you spend in a session and how do you make it fun? Well, um, I wouldn't spend any more time than is fun. <laughs> so I'm paying attention to the kids or group of kids or single kid that I'm with. And I'm if at any point you feel like you're being forced to do something, you're not going to enjoy doing that thing anymore. Um, so plan on, I would say, anywhere between a minimum of a half hour and a maximum of an hour and a half. Um, but know that I'm not going to, as a uh, speaking as someone who was once a student, I'm not going to feel like I'm learning well. I know I'm not going to learn well if I'm not enjoying myself. Um, so ways to make it fun are, as I've learned in the last year and a half, anytime you can turn something into a little bit more of a game, it's going to be a good thing. Gamification. So how do I make this a little bit competitive, but with myself, not with anybody else. Um, so you're not on the bike and racing and trying to go faster with anybody, but with yourself, you're saying, okay, I was able to stay up for three seconds this time that I did it. The next time I'm going to try and stay up for four seconds. And I'm going to pretend like uh, in between where this end of the basketball court and the other end of the basketball court is molten lava. And if I touch the molten lava, then my shoes will melt. And I really like these shoes and I don't want my shoes to melt. So I have to make sure and keep them up off the ground for as long as I can. And if I touch the lava a little bit, that's okay. That's just a little bit of melting. But you don't want to leave them on the ground because that's the thing that's really going to make your shoes melt. Little things like that. Anything you can do to make it more, I don't know, whimsical is probably too strong a word. Um, but uh, you're learning a skill, but the skill that you're learning is something that's going to be fun for you later on. This isn't learning a skill that's like chopping. I guess chopping wood's fun for some people, but you're learning a skill that you will use to have fun later on. And so starting it fun, keeping it fun throughout uh, is absolutely a priority. Um, the other last thing I wanted to say, and I think you can probably speak to this too, is falling is something that is going to happen. And it isn't something that you should necessarily be super afraid of, especially when you're on that blacktop and you've done all these things to mitigate the actual danger. Um, having the bike fall down is okay. Uh, scraping your knee up a little bit is okay. Um, finding yourself on the ground is okay. This is all part of the learning process. Um, and so uh, don't plan on falling necessarily, but if you are gonna fall, know that that isn't the end of the world. I just thought of a couple kind of like a child psychology sides of this. So what I've noticed a lot of times is a parent at some point feels like they've failed and they just can't keep doing the teaching. And that's definitely a thing. Like some kids need to be taught by somebody else that maybe they don't know as well. Maybe they know in a different capacity, but it's really easy to begin judging someone's own experience based on how it was for you. And maybe that was only like a couple months ago, but maybe that was like 25 years ago. So giving people the space to fail a couple times and that being okay, you know, being positive, giving them positive feedback and encouragement, and also being honest that this is difficult and it doesn't happen immediately. And just because you don't know how to bike now doesn't mean that you won't become an awesome cyclist at some point. So something that I found really motivational with the woman I was recently teaching, she'd taken a little fall and she was like, okay, cool. I think I'm done today. Like my knee's bleeding a little bit. I don't want to keep biking. And then we walked the bikes past the velodrome in San Diego and she saw people like zipping around the track and was like, oh, cool. I want to do that. Not today, obviously, and maybe not even like this month, but that's something I'm excited about. 
Yeah, and just think, being able to, you know, stop and like acknowledge that it's difficult, but that's okay. Right, and and watching videos of people riding bikes and watching other people actually ride bikes in real life can absolutely be motivating. Um, so if you're looking up a whole bunch of different YouTube videos about how to ride bikes, great. Um, we'll have one up shortly as well. And Sylvie, if people wanted even more help being able to get up and ride a bike. Uh, and they didn't feel like they were capable of teaching the person that was with them uh, themselves, then what would they do? Well, good segue, Kevin. We have a class coming up on August 10th. We have a class on August 26th and August 27th. All ages and abilities welcome. We'll have a bunch of people coming out to teach those classes, so we'll just divide up by age and ability. You know, something I didn't mention because I couldn't convince Kevin to do this when we filmed that video of him biking was that sometimes with young kids, the pedaling motion is totally new to them. So having them lay down, put both feet up and get used to the pedaling motion is also it's kind of fun. And it's just a good way to build something else into that skill set that you'll then apply to biking. A little supine pedaling. But yeah, we've got classes coming up. All of that's on the Bike Coalition's website. And this is something we have usually taught as one-on-one -on -one classes. We'll be doing them as group classes instead. I think that's going to add a fun component to this because to be the only one who doesn't know how to bike sometimes doesn't feel awesome. But to be in a group of people that kind of look like you, you know, same ages as you, that can make it feel a lot more accessible and okay and encouraging. Absolutely. Cool. I'm excited about those classes. I am too. I think we get a lot of uh, requests for those things and we're not always able to meet them just because traditionally the bike collisions focus more on commuting by bicycle and getting from point A to point B. And once you already know how to ride, we can make you even better at that. But let's start from the beginning. Uh, all ages, all skill levels, welcome. Um, although I guess if you're an expert already and you have a full spandex kit, then um, I guess stay away. Um, no, I'm kidding. you can come if you want. It's just not going to... You're not going to get a lot out of it. Um, but we want to get people from, I'm not confident at all on a bicycle and even moving on a bicycle, to I can bring my dog with me uh, when I'm riding my bicycle. We'll, we'll get all the way over there. Okay. Yeah, let's sign off. That was cool. cool. Yeah, thank, everybody, thank you everybody for being here. Um, this video will be up uh, afterwards as well. Um, and uh, check our website uh, if you want to get in on some of those classes, and we'll see you out there on the road. Thanks a lot.